This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show episode 657. Tuesdays we've been talking professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Where else? And we got a hell of a crew with us tonight. And another round of Mayhem Mania. Who knows who's going to be on by the time we get to that. Uh, with us, first of all, remotely from Beacon, New York, he is the only Mayhemmer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. Sorg. Um, I now own 40% of the show. What do you mean 40% of the show? Oh, 40%. because you dropped your Patreon I, in the bank donation. I did the math. You did the math? Did the math. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I own 40% of the show. <laughs> I don't know if, I mean, we, we, everybody gets a part of the show, but I don't, we I own 40% what percentage of the, show, of the Patreons is the ownership of the show? Sorg, I did the math. You did the math. I did the math. I'm a scientist. It all checks out. It is true. It is true. You are a. And yeah. to be fair. I split yours and miss you share. So realistically, <laughs> realistically, you know, Hold not on. evenly because Missy what does the more. Hell? I gave Missy more percentage <laughs> when I did my math. But oh, producer Missy does not have headphones on to hear that the good news. <laughs> I know, but but she she knows my sentiments. So yes. <laughs> also with us doing the informing is uh, Larry is with us. Hi. Up here from making uh, weapons. I'm making, I'm making the, jersey barriers. That I'll jersey be se- bears. I'll be selling them for five hundred dollars a piece. In case you want to upgrade your parking chair to keep those fuckers out of your parking spot. I'm telling you, man, there's a market in Pittsburgh for that. Oh yeah. If you like, if you just yeah. make jersey bears for everybody. Man, yeah, know. yeah. You just uh, put you just put them there. They look realistic. When you want to park, just mm-hmm. move it out of the way. Put your car there. I'm gonna, like, I'm, gonna, when, I'm gonna start selling them in Swickley. Can I grab a couple of your extra ones? Like every time I need to make a room to do a load up out front here. Sure. So yeah. At Stark Forge, yep. that's Stark Forge Studios we're talking about, StarkForgeStudios.co. Yes. Right out of the basement here in the, the Sorgatron Media um, uh, facility. Yes. I don't know. Our, our our name's on the front of the, of the building, and that's who. Yeah, you, you're, and that, you're, and, you're the one that and, gets you're the one that gets the phone call whenever yeah, I do things yeah, questionable whenever, with the newspaper company. Whenever you do something questionable with the local newspaper <laughs> company, I'm the one that gets threatened. The cops are going to show up. Okay, so. Damn it, I'm naming the building after us. Uh, so, Why not? That's anyway, fine. also with us wondering what the hell he got himself into is comedian Matt Light. Hey guys, what's going on? How's it Long going? Time no see. Comedian <laughs> and uh, amateur boxer? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to bring it up. <laughs> oh, no, dude. It was awesome, man. Like, it was everything I wanted. It was just. That's er- everything short. you wanted? No, here's the thing. This is. <laughs> It couldn't have gone any better other than getting knocked out in 10 seconds. Like, I felt like this. You knew I wasn't a fighter going into it. Right. Like, I don't right. fight. The odds were not good. Right. He's yeah. six. Like, so I cheated to fight. People don't realize that. Like, I. Because he weighed. <laughs> listen, I had to weigh 202 pounds. I don't weigh that. I weighed 187. So at the weigh ins, I had fucking. He, he weighed murder. Yeah, dude. I had ankle weights on. <laughs> Did you see my intro with the Shawn Michaels vest that I had? That was a sand vest that I wore underneath my outfit <laughs> to make weight because I wasn't, I, I shouldn't have fought. But I was like, I'm going to have left fun the vest with this. on. It would have like During dampened the, fight, the punches. Yeah, oh, no, way. don't worry. He only threw one and it hit me in the face. Oh. So. Either way. <laughs> so it wouldn't have done shit. Okay. <laughs> Either way, you have the most. Uh, Brett stole the show. You did. You did. You, and you have the most uh, uh, sporting experience of anybody on the show tonight. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Ned, Ned, just just take solace in the fact that you lasted almost as long as Bart Gunn, and he was a professional. Oh, uh, dude, player. I watched that the night before too. When <laughs> Bart Gunn <laughs> just fucking cracked him. Well, what, so I met Shaq the night before that fight, and yeah. I, I literally yeah. called my dad like because I was shit because Shaq was like my favorite player, you know. And I called my dad. I go, I could get knocked out in ten seconds tomorrow, and I'll still be so happy. And I feel like that was the worst thing I could have said. 
because somebody was like, I got you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll make sure that happens too. <laughs> it could happen. It was awesome, though, dude. That was great. I was just pissed they stopped it, man, because there's such bullshit about it. They were like, oh, he was knocked out. I was like, I got up in five seconds. The ref said, stay down. <laughs> he literally said, stay down. because So they said that because of the way that my head hit the, the mat, they were worried about it. And yeah. I rolled over. I just stayed like this, and everyone's like, oh, you were limp. I was like, dude, I was fine. The, the commissioner, the state commissioner said he should have kept going. The doctor said I should have kept going. I pretended like I wanted to keep going. So, like, they should have <laughs> let it happen, okay? Like, they should have let it happen. Jeez. Well, as long as you pretended. Oh, like, yeah. I like, mean, what was I going to do? Put my head down? I was like, I'm, yeah, I'm it, the heel. Like, I'm the bad like guy. When you're on a date, like, you have to have the other person reach for the tab, like, pretend they're going to pay, even if you're going to pay the whole thing. Oh, you have yeah. To pretend. yeah. Well, it was just like uh, losing my virginity, too. It lasted 13 <laughs> fucking seconds. <laughs> Somebody was very disappointed between the two of us. One punch and, in the face and you were done. Yeah, and, that was it. One punch in the face. And, and, and you rolled Somebody over was asleep afterwards. during it. <laughs> and you made a lot of noise afterwards. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And people made money off. Except Wait, I got what? paid instead of them. So that was cool. <laughs> Robert Kraft. Oh, well, good to have you back with us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> good to have you with us we'll be catching up with some more things going on including uh what you're doing in the wrestling world too since we've talked to you last year later, later in the so show exciting yeah some awesome stuff and yeah some cool stuff that launched here in pittsburgh several months ago but anyways this is the wrestling mayhem show check out everything at wrestling show.com where you can find links to and subscribe to us in podcast and video form or look us up on your favorite platform hit us up at that email address Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. Uh, check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. And over on the Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show, you can join us every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, where uh, maybe we'll talk for 20 minutes about real estate values in the Beachview area before we get to <laughs> professional wrestling. But either way, you're joining us, and we appreciate that. Also, we are streaming on other Sorgatron media platforms like Periscope and YouTube and Twitch. If you are joining us on there uh, on the Tuesday night, please head on over to Facebook if you do have something to say uh, opinion or comment or otherwise. Are you calling a horse race right now? No, I just... It's just... This... <laughs> <laughs> we just do this every week. So good. And and it, there's been a lot of practice. Uh, also, hit us up at our streaming partners, the 405media.com, where uh, they are carrying us every, every night, seven days a week at 9 p.m. Pacific time, uh, midnight Eastern time, so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem. Also, thanks to our Patreon supporters, we've had some updates because it is Patreon in the bank season, and I know you guys want to get involved with that. We do have a date that is March 26th that is going to be happening, so if you're going to participate in that, please clear your Tuesday night on March 26th to join us in the chat room or whatever media. I don't know. I forget what, what Carlin's does with uh, all this, but um, he's the organizer of that. Uh, our friends at the fan of the show, uh, $1 level, Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Berg, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. And our friends at the Pocky Club, $5 level. Looking to get you guys some extra stuff this week as far as content goes. Stay tuned for that. Our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remedy, Dave Potter, Kyle Turner, and new, our good friend Daniel Tiger. Daniel Towery is his real name. I see it in text now. I didn't know if you were joking he meant Liddy or... No, no, no. Oh, I didn't think <laughs> about that. Daniel Tiger definitely needs to meet Liddy now. So there's a whole thing there. Uh, I love the main event. <laughs> it's a main event. It's awesome. The that, that was like the... That was... Listen, we talked to a lot of people on this show. Everybody from like like a nasty boy to to Jimmy Snuka to you know all of our friends, Good Elias, angle. and all those guys. Liddy might be the high I, i'm sorry matt uh, liddy may be the high point of this show oh he's, he's amazing <laughs> I mean, yeah geez. dude they're uh, great and also wait at the manager 20 dollar level is mad mike yeah 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 that, that's me you go serious when it comes to patreon in the bank well matt carlin's informed me that i probably would not get another turn before yeah. patreon in the we bank, have a waiting so you know list what? i'm fucking making an account 
Wow. <laughs> also, I did skip at the Pizza Club, $10 level of friends at the Wrestling Revolution.com. Uh, Tony Garza that does the amazing graphics for Mayhem Mania. So go check that out. If you want to support the show, if you want to do some damage at Patreon in the bank for Mayhem Mania, uh, please go over to patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. And thank you everybody for supporting the show and literally help us keep the lights on here in the studio at Sorgatron Media. All right, let's get into it. Well, the biggest thing this past week, uh, actually raw, I think, at least locally for a lot of us, was a pretty yeah, serious locally, thing. Cause... Locally, maybe not. <laughs> and I think we might be doing a, a side thing um, a, 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 aside from this. Um, but we we had a lot of friends of the show pop up on Raw last night. I yeah. missed it. You you missed it. You missed it. Mad Mike, I know you watched and you saw some familiar faces. Oh no! And he froze. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> See you, Mike. And he's gone. And he's gone. Is it this? This is like, it's like it's like the internet knows. Uh, but no, we. Uh, yeah. I think they were. Oh, you're back now. I'm back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I saw Raw last night too. Like, I, I saw a lot of people I recognized. Like, mm-hmm. I, I saw you know, couple a uh, couple of um, conga liners that I was like, oh, I know that boy, I know that person, but I didn't see a lot of wrestling. So Raw wasn't the best experience to a uh, television viewer. Oh, amazing for us there locally. Um, no, the, the, the between the security force and the uh, the La conga Russo, line, right? Larusso, Larusso was, was a part Shane. of it. Shane was part uh, of Victor it. Victor Benjamin, yes. Yeah. Uh, and a couple uh, of referees with Rise. Matthew Justice got slammed into the barriers, which was great. Mm-hmm. I texted him right afterwards. I was like, bro, he sold the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, there was a, a, um, you know, a referee that looked kind of familiar. I don't know who that guy was, but uh, uh, and and yeah, it was it was kind of cool to see uh, all, so many faces there like that. They, and and of course and and, and if. I really, I, I please any local wrestling promotion, please book the guardians of the indie wrestling world. <laughs> that Triple was such, H- that the was guardians so of funny, the independence. Uh, was it guardian of the independence? Guardians of the independence. Um, like honestly, that, that should be a whole faction for Mania weekend. <laughs> it should. It really should. Yeah, please, uh, uh, Impact Evolve Blackcraft. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Take this idea, please, and run with it. And hire a hell, hell. You have like well, we have you half, have, half yeah, you of them have are half on our that. roster. So. Between, yeah, between Frost, Justice, and Victor. Yeah, we yeah. got three. Of I them. mean, I don't think you're going to be bad with Larusso. That's the new evolution. You got right at least there. two referees in there. Yeah, I mean, you're you're, you're half. You can set have with them that. reenact yeah. the Guardians poster. Like it'd be great. <laughs> yes. Uh, but no, that was a lot of fun. Uga 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 chaka uga 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 cha. <laughs> Uh, but the other big news from this week uh, was, like I said, I think we might, might do something special with that uh, when, when Carlos gets here later. Uh, Ronda Rousey was making some news this past week. Uh, oh, God. She's some, going fucking she sucks. <laughs> she just fucking sucks. Did you watch the video? Yeah, first, it's not real. Yeah. Like, dude, like, you, you're just like, bad. Duh. Like, fucking duh. But I, I like the fans that, like, complain about that, though. You know what I mean? Like, I can't believe you're breaking cape. It's not, you know, what's, you know, like, don't act like you didn't like, like she's telling you something you didn't know. We did get a great meme out of it though. Oh yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, we, we, we ran hard with this. We ran hard with this on our, on our Facebook group <laughs> for one thing. Uh, I'm trying to pull some of them up here, but um, uh, my, my favorite, like one, one of mine that I threw down was WrestleMania is not even in New York. Yeah, she's just not. trying so hard. Like, did you see her like like going up to the person that was driving? She's like, "What else could I say to be mean to them? Like to the fans?" Mm-hmm. She just she just sucks at everything. She's she's actually I don't mind watching her wrestle. I honestly don't because she wrestles for five minutes. She does what she has to do and gets the fuck out of the ring, which is fine. But like her promote her promos are so bad because she doesn't pause. Mm-hmm. She she's well, like, she why can't. don't she goes? Why don't she, I get a reaction? I'm like, I don't know. Because you're reading a fucking script. In one she breath. She can't pause yeah. because really, A, she'll get breath. completely shook by the booze. Mm. And two, she'll completely forget all of her lines. Yeah. It's just, I mean, like, I get it. But, like, then then just have somebody with her. Have Paul Heyman take care of both of them. I don't Paul understand Heyman, why like, not. The second she turned heel, Paul Heyman. 
Yeah, oh yeah, it would be a perfect fit for that. Uh, Mainstream Matt is getting hooked up here, and while you're doing that, I think I got your mic live over there while you're getting your headset on. Uh, we'll we'll double check your your camera over here. But uh, Ronda Rousey, hate it, hate it. Uh, let me clarify too. We've been let talking about we we talking about like her video blog and everything too. So. Well, you stood next to me at Raw on Monday night. Yes. So you know how much I hate it. Um, and not just hate. Let, let's. I have to just dis- make a distinction between hate her and hate it. I hate it, mm-hmm. and I hate that she's going off in this direction where, you know, I, I hate what Rhonda's doing. You know, with you know, it's not real. I could really kill you if I wanted to. I hate that for the same reason I hated Triple H using Ric Flair's real name mm-hmm. because it's you're breaking the unspoken agreement between the viewer and. And, and, and the people who are creating the product. And illustrate that more, I believe there was the part where Triple H was like, "This is this isn't Triple H the yeah, character. This, isn't, this the isn't the character. game. This is this is this is me." You're not gonna. You know? I was waiting for him to yeah. say his real name. He never did. You know what? His real name sucks. Triple H is awesome. John Paul, <laughs> freaking whatever, sucks. Uncle Paul, you know, and he knows that. You know, mm-hmm. if he, so, yeah, it's really but, cute. He, he's gonna name drop everyone else's real name, but when it comes time to say his real name, because I'm not a character. No, he won't say it. You know why? Because he knows I, it sucks. He's already done this with Punk, what, seven Stupid. years ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think he's done it. Slightly but different. But like, that was like, that was not like, that was a little different because that was more like, I'm needling you because, you know, Punk, and Punk's thing was different too in a way because it never broke, it, like I said, it, the, 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 the critical thing, you know, like, like I, I'm sure my Mike has said this from time to time, you know, they don't stop in the middle of the Marvel movie and say, low. Say you know, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Nick Fury, his other eye really does work, you know. Um, yeah, unless you're Deadpool, J- J.K. You know, um, unless unless you're Deadpool. Yeah, like, but yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. It's no, but Deadpool does it in jest, and Deadpool doesn't do it at the detriment of the product. It, that's why I'm okay like, with that, Triple that's H. That's the whole it? gimmick. But I mean, in general, <laughs> wait a minute, you don't do that. I mean, it's wait, just wait. we're pulling Deadpool into this conversation. It's well, my favorite. That's movie. what we're talking about. We're talking about breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. We're the not talking about we're not talking about breaking the fourth wall. That's not that's not what we're talking about. Because I mean, in wrestling, there is no there is no wall. I mean, it's just K-fabe it's all the out there. Wall. See, yeah, I, it, 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 there's a difference between the fourth I, wall and kayfabe. I mean, the, the fourth wall, as a descriptor, doesn't even apply like to professional wrestling because it's just it's just it's circle of the round. It's there's nothing to right. to break. I mean, it, but the, you drop the fake word, and and you are and, and you're. Like I said, I mean, you're breaking the unspoken and, and, and code this between... The, and this is the only place they're doing that. They did that with the SNL guys last week with Braun Strowman. I yeah. think they did it tonight with AJ Styles and Randy Orton, too. Did they, too? They didn't really go that yeah, far. I just, I, I didn't they were hear more talking it, about but... personal histories and how they came in and kind of dropping names. That's different. I, That's kind of being a little um, edgy. But like, I wonder when you're saying is... that, like... And, and this has kind of been a pro wrestling thing since, like, you know, for, for decades, you know? When everyone, you know, when it was all like wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you'd be like, well, you know, the rest of this guy's on this, you know, the rest of this show is fake. But Bruno, he's legit. The rest of these guys are fake. But Luthez, he's legit. Mm -hmm. So they're they're creating this whole new thing. Hey, the rest of these guys on this show, they don't freaking matter. But Ronda, she's legit. But Triple H, he's legit, Mm -hmm. you know. But the rest of these guys don't matter. Uh So, I mean, it's not like it's something new. But to me, it's... It's a it's a path I don't want to go down. Uh, uh, Matt, you you've worked around wrestlers in in, in, in some capacity here with Blackcraft Wrestling and mm-hmm. everything, right? Uh, what are your, your thoughts on this? I don't have a problem with the Ronda Rousey thing, only because I feel like they're in desperation mode with her, mm-hmm. because it's like we don't know what we have to do to get her over one way or another. You know, you want a reaction whether you like her or you don't. The problem is she gets neither. Because nobody gives a shit about her. It's like, it's a phase. Been there, done that. We've seen it. You're the female Brock Lesnar. You fuck, you just get your paycheck. You wrestle for a little bit. You came out as a heel, fucking smiling, pointing at a sign, fangirling. And it's it's just not working. So I feel like the fact that they're using it the way that they are, where she's saying it's not wrong. I've had so many people, whether it's like in the indies or actually just friends hitting me up going, you know what? I'm following Twitter a lot more between Becky and Rhonda because I can't tell what's real and what's not. So mm-hmm. what they're really doing is making this fight feasible because you're going to watch WrestleMania and a lot of people are going to be like, 
Is she really going to fucking tag her? Is she really going to hit her once? Is she going to pop her? I don't have a problem with that aspect, but the Batista and Triple H, it just comes off forced, phony, and just bullshit. But with Ronda, I feel like it makes honest sense because let's be realistic. Everyone that, because they have their partnership with Sports Center. So now, anytime something's breaking news for WWE, mm-hmm. ESPN posts it, and the first or thing bleach, somebody or comments, or something, yeah, right. and they're, the first thing somebody them, comments, yeah. I thought this was sports. So WWE is like, well, you're gonna talk about it this way. We're gonna fucking throw it right back at you like this way. Mm-hmm. And now people are like, well, is it real? Is it fake? What are they gonna do here? So you're bringing in outside looks for Ronda Rousey's fight yeah. because wrestling fans are always gonna watch. Yeah. They're always going to watch. But if she's coming out saying, I really hate this bitch. She went way too far, yada, yada. You're going to get those those casual fans that don't ever watch him. Like, she's going to punch her in the face. She's going to hit her. Like, when Orton allowed Brock to bust him open like that, people were like, holy shit. Jericho didn't know if it was real or not. You know what right. I mean? So it's like, there's times that it needs to be necessary. And I think it makes 100%. I, I, I think there's there's a there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. And when you when you use the fake word, um but she didn't, you've gone yeah. too far. Rhonda could have done could have done everything she's done up to this point and said all these little code words for what we all know is true without actually saying it. It's actually saying it that to me but, crosses a line. But she also she didn't do that on a WWE platform, right? No, she, no, did no. She, she did no, it. She, she did it last night. She did it last night. She, but I mean, that she, was because it broke free. Like, how many times have you seen Dolph Ziggler get in trouble when he does, you know, shoot interviews? I mean, you're gonna find a shoot interview online. Yeah, you're, they're but all shoot gonna interviews say it was fake. are different than than stuff that goes out like on a on a wrestler's personal page. Because, yeah, but, like, I'm sure you have little girls who are fans of Ronda Rousey who goes to Ronda Rousey's YouTube all the time because she's been doing updates of her life on the road. Right, and, and, and she's she's under different roles because she's Ronda Rousey first, and she's bringing that in. She's not yeah, somebody be- who's, like, a brand controlled by WWE, like, a, like you know... Because they even had, like, Ronda Rousey said shit in one of her tweets. Yeah. And then you had a few of the other guys on SmackDown, like Tyler Breeze and stuff like that, like, oh, we can say shit now on Twitter? This is right. great. And those guys had to delete their tweets. Right. But, I mean, but so like, it's, but, a, it's a shitty double standard. But the language isn't the issue. Tyler yeah, I mean, Breeze that's, exists that's not the still? issue. What's that? Tyler Breeze yeah. still exists? Oh, does he ever? Yeah, he oh, beat man. He had, 3 on main event. Yeah, yeah BDC3 on main event. Ah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the only thing the, this means the is language I'm going to have to main event now. That sounds great. And the reaction it like to it match. is not, you know, that's not the issue for me at least. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> we have a comment. I'm sorry. Catching up here. Uh, El Paso McZombie in the chat room. Uh, <laughs> that's I a just, real name. No, I just love saying that, that every time I say it. I know who it is. I who just, just, to me, he'll always who be Who that El guy Paso. ever beat? He who will never, ever beat. stop being El Paso McZombie yeah, from now on. He says, I think those fans came to Raw yesterday <laughs> and confirmed that it was uh, fake as expected and left and won't come back. Uh, pissing off hardcores for the sake of Monday's rating is not best for the business. So, you know. Um, I mean, yeah. And, and, and well, I mean, you were at the show last night. You, so you saw there are still was. people adamantly cheering for Ronda. <laughs> Um, and not because they're reacting to anything she's saying or one way or the other. They're just, they like Rhonda and yeah. they liked her before she came into and those people WWE and they're going to cheer yeah. for her afterwards. They, they, they're like fans of Conor McGregor. They're going to cheer for Conor McGregor whether he fights, wins, throws a dolly at a tour bus, stomps <laughs> on someone's phone. It's not going to matter. They're going to be fans of Connor. Um, MMA fans are, you think, you know, res- you think wrestling fans are, are stubborn, stubbornly loyal. You should take a look at the MMA fans. That's stubbornness, you know. Yeah, and it's 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 so weird because like wrestling fans, like you can, but you can have an argument with them, and they don't want to, you know, take off their bedazzled kitty cat shirts and want to fight. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> UFC, <laughs> UFC fans. Like the difference is, I've always wanted to do a sketch about this, about like two guys getting into a fight at a bar, and one's a WWE fan and one's a UFC fan, and see how like. Somebody walk by and be like, they're both fucking losers. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because the, the WWE guy is just like, well, actually, this is ruining this and that. And then the rest and the UFC fans are like, bro, I'll fucking put you in this headlock. I'll fucking. Re-. I'm like, bro, you have asthma. Shut up. <laughs> like, drink your Zima, bro. Like, relax. I mean, both of them are operating inside of rules. I mean, even in the world of MMA, there are rules, you know. So if you're, there's a difference between fighting in the street. 
you know, and fighting in an MMA ring. And there's a big difference between fighting in an MMA ring and or in the street and fighting in yeah. a wrestling ring. You know, there are rules. Yeah. And, and you have to, and in my mind, you have to operate in those rules. You know, if I wave at I everyone that walks by, <laughs> I just, you're making friends through the window. What's up? Be careful. Sometimes they walk in here. We have the door. Do we have the door locked? <laughs> yeah, gotta make sure that door's locked if we're gonna Ooh, do sorry this. About that. <laughs> we have sparkle yeah. pants come in. Yeah, no, yeah, no, that doesn't need to happen. Anyways, well, like, like, go ahead, Mike. This whole thing with the like, I'm pr- I know that you can tell they've given Rhonda and Becky kind of free reign to do whatever they want. Like, I'm pretty sure someone has given Becky a directive to try and piss off Rhonda as much as possible. And it works because it makes her heel character a bit more believable. Or is she just doing it? She might just be doing it too. Is and she if she's just, just doing, doing it, Becky's Bluster, been doing it before. I mean, Ronda. that's where you want to be, though. You want to be in that on that line where you're like, "Is this supposed to be happening? Is this supposed mm. to be happening?" Um, you don't want to cross that line. It's the but. It's... But here's the thing. Like, and I hate to do a Triple H quote, but if this doesn't end with Becky making Rhonda tap out, it's all been for nothing. Why is that? But, uh, no, because like I feel like... Because uh, Rhonda is purposefully alienating the business that's paying her. She's alienating... Like, she said, fuck the WWE Universe. Mm-hmm. Like, so is Brock. That, no, Brock has never said well, that. Well, he's done it in a different... He's done it through actions. Yeah, yeah. Plus, <laughs> Rhonda's Rhonda's never said the also words, you know? his stripes because he did wrestle professionally for WWE for years. Right. Uh, there, Rhonda there has a... been with the company for a year and a month or so. Mm-hmm. Like she has not been with the company that long, has not earned that kind of reputation to do what Brock Lesnar does. Well she doesn't and if bike. this doesn't end with Rhonda tapping out in the middle of the ring, then they did this for a big buy rate and that's it. And then everyone questioning the validity of your product. Well, I, I mean I don't I don't think like Brock is like on in on like a different level than Rhonda because he has some sort of, you know, elevated level of respect in the business or outside the business. I just just think Brock is operating out of a position of power, you know, on, on how he can manipulate WWE. He should have walked out the door of this company like two years ago, uh, but they keep bringing him back because they're so desperate to have a draw, but they, but, but they never, and the situation with Rhonda that we fear is going to happen at mania is the same thing we've seen play out with Brock over and over again, where like you keep, building and building and building you're like when is somebody gonna just gonna be brock you know and it just seems like it you know it never happens um three, had to happen three a couple year, times three years later yeah but three, you <laughs> we're know, still playing the and they just keep song. pushing it you know pushing it down the road because i don't know it's like you, you want to build up this bad guy and build him up and build him up and it's almost like they're afraid to you know they make, should just have to, cyborg to pull the trigger, the you know. But see, here's the thing, and they shouldn't be because <laughs> all they have to do is get a at yeah. the end you know? of April. Seriously. Yeah, Thanos is gonna even, get beat. <laughs> even just have her ringside. Thanos is gonna yeah. get beaten, you guys. Just like, have her spooked. That's it. Yeah. I, because I, here, I'm gonna be honest though. Like, what was it, SummerSlam or whatever it was, where Brock fought the Undertaker and he gave the finger and went out and Brock didn't tap when he passed out mm-hmm. to the undertaker yeah. see as a as a wrestling fan i was like fuck that because i know that would never happen yeah like i know that would never so that's why i don't like the idea of becky lynch 114 pounds gonna make you know arguably the most dominant ufc fighter of all time in, in a wrestling uh, match. You can't say that anymore. Uh, yeah, you really you can't, can't say that anymore. She's not. She went out you can't, you, you, can't, you can't say that <laughs> over her period of time she was the, not saying she's the best. Right, but, but that, that was her like reign she was, was dumb, the most yeah. dominant reign. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, well, I guess, oh, let's but, not. Let's it's not. not that's what, every champion. And then let's not shortchange what Ronda did. I mean, she never won again. Yeah. But look at Brock. Look at yeah. I'm saying Brock the same way. Brock had his stomach issues. And then they set him up against Mark Hunt, who was who was a five hundred fucking fighter, and they set his comeback match up to just whoop his ass and hold him down on the ring. The match wasn't great; he just held him down. So it's like yeah. Brock's the same way. Like you know, they say he's the most dominant thing ever, and so is Ronda. I'm talking in WWE world. That's how they're building but, these. But people. they they built. Bring it, but don't they you think built, they go? They take it too far to the point where it's it. 
it, it requires such a stretch of believability for anyone to beat Brock or anyone to beat Ronda that it's like, almost they just have becomes to outsmart her. A, it, it almost becomes no, a point Ronda, where these Ronda these people like these people the are like a Raw detriment to the division. whole company. Yeah, and Ronda made the entire Raw Women's Division useless so much so to the point that the only way they can get someone viable for her to face at WrestleMania was to pull two people from SmackDown. I wouldn't necessarily say that because I would. They, 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 built, the they built up Sasha and they got a legitimately good match between her and Sasha at the Rumble. Yeah, she's but on then the Raw Ronda roster. Look, Ronda mowed through the Alexa Blisses and the Nikki Bellas of the world, but the minute she hit the real quality of the, you know, the WWE women's roster, you know, she ran into a wall. And honestly, her Ronda's progression as a performer like started to stagnate the minute that she started to hit that resistance workers, yeah. um, oh, and i don't she didn't got give you an explanation of why that actually is actually over but i can tell you that like when ronda jumped into the ring a year ago at wrestlemania um it was amazing and it was awesome and it was because there was a ton of care that went into making sure that they got that right and there was a lot of care that went into making sure that they got you know those matches you know right after mania with like naya yeah, yeah. and alexa and they build up to that match at nikki so much care was put into that and i don't know where the disconnect happened, but somewhere along the line, Rhonda as a performer is starting to slip. And I don't know if that's because she's got her eye, you know, on the way on, on on going out the door. If it's because she's just plateauing as a performer, because there's only so good you can get learning on the job in this kind of a business. Um, I, you know, I can't explain it, but get booed. See, the second she started to get booed because that like in her first six months as a run, they never put her against anyone that even had the remote sense of being popular or being over. The only time they ever came close to that was Natty, and Ronda still got cheered because, let's face it, no one cares about Natty because we've never been given a reason to. Like, the second any of the four horsewomen right. but started I'm... sniffing near Ronda, right. that's when she started to falter because even if it wasn't, it, it wasn't a hundred percent. We love Ronda Rousey, but just think about how much care they put into just like preparing her for every single situation and how careful they were with everything else. And to think that there was no one in the back, you know, at WWE who had an inkling of, well, the minute we put her against Charlotte or Becky or Sasha or Bailey, you know, she might run into a little bit of resistance. So we better make sure we're extra careful with this stuff. Well, cause when you have those top tier workers, they're not going to fucking sell everything and just be like oh i'm just gonna get my ass kicked like the fucking welcome mat where alexa alexa's gimmick was a spoiled asshole pretty much yeah she, she was yeah a, you know what i mean yeah, so she, like she's she's a, she makes sense for that to she's happen a, yeah. she's a chicken shit heel right right, yeah. right. So, but, but still isn't when you we talk about a top performer in professional wrestling like a charlotte like a becky isn't part of being a top performer making sure both sides of the equation work like Ric yeah, Flair, sometimes Ric Flair you can't control what the crowd does. Yeah, right, right, right. But, but but not even part that part of it, of course. But but Rick, like Ric Flair made a lot of people look like a million bucks. Yeah, Him but and Shawn Michaels were the exact yeah, same. But so. Ric Flair was doing that as a heel, though. Yeah, okay. you put you put when you put Ronda and, Rousey and every against one of the horse uh, I think baby Sasha Banks. Look yeah, good. it's not it's not going to work. Well, it's a more complicated you know? world where you're, heels you're putting and, two baby faces. Right, together. right. It's a more complicated world where heels and faces aren't exactly the same black and white thing. Yeah, I I but, I, th- I just think you know I I just think that they hit a wall because the the novelty of her is just it's gone. Yeah, I think that's it. I think I think WWE did everything they could to to make this what it is. Yeah, but. I, I hate to say it because like I I'm involved with wrestling, but like wrestling fans are the most spoiled fucking fans in the world. They want they don't <laughs> want to see a story get played out. They want it right here, right now. Like when everyone was crying when Kofi didn't win, I was like, why would you want him to win mm-hmm. so he can lose mm-hmm. on Monday and then fuck you? You know yeah. what I mean? Like then and who now, cares? And we're getting you know updates right now from the chat room that Kofi's on SmackDown. Uh, giving a great promo and staring down Vince. Right. right? They did. They did a little thing to kind of poke you a little bit on the fast lane pay per view with Kofi and uh, say, "Oh, and that was match. all Daniel no, Bryan, by yeah. the way." Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure. You well, know what I mean? To be fair, none of this would have happened if Ali didn't get hurt. Mm-hmm. None of this would have happened. Yep. So this, this would not have happened. We would. Have, I guarantee we would have seen Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Owens at WrestleMania. They're saying if Kofi Mustafa is, Ali didn't get hurt. Kofi is cutting the promo of his life at Vince right now. Uh, so but it'll be see, great to see that. Like, to defend wrestling fans slightly, I think a lot of Bad them... Mike, step up for them. Well, no, I'm Represent I'm all of us. A lot of, 
a lot of wrestling fans demand the instant satisfaction because nine times out of ten, when we wait for storylines to progress, we don't get the payoff that we feel has been told in the story. Give me or an example. The trust isn't earned. Booker we, T we losing on, to uh... Triple H at Wrestle Goddamn Mania. Booker T should have never lost to Triple H at WrestleMania. Booker T should have never lost to Triple H at WrestleMania. It's, like it's... that's just one example that I can think of off the top of my head. It's easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there are dozens, countless examples of what should have happened and what we got. But we're also talking about something that was what ten years ago. How many when before social media was a thing? Before everyone cried every split second. And that's the difference is like when you would when you would talk shit on message boards and stuff, WWE didn't give a shit. They're like, we don't care. Mm. It's only between you dorks. But now when it's on Twitter and everyone's pissed off and it's a public company now, people are like, oh, we got to give them what they want. We got to give them what they want. Give Divas a chance. Yeah. For instance. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. But even that took almost a year. But that's what makes it happen. Like, like I remember when brought like because so I was backstage at at the Royal Rumble when it was in Pittsburgh. And I was right there when Daniel Bryan was told, you're not in the Rumble. Uh, side note, this is a disclaimer we do every time. We're sorry, Dave. Uh, I'm also sorry to no, Rey Mysterio. Not. Sorry, Rey Mysterio. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> super, super, super pissed off. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I think I was never a Daniel Bryan fan, so I didn't give a shit. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I, and, I, and I just, I saw how upset the fans were. You know, Ray comes out, he eats the bullet at 30, everyone's upset. But like him being in the Rumble, winning, and then r- winning at WrestleMania would not have been as good as what he did, had to do. Mm-hmm. He had to run but, the gauntlet because it was so much better because it was like, holy shit, holy shit, that's an underdog. A guy that overcomes 30 it was a great people story. and then but wins also, that at WrestleMania, have happened if big deal. Well, left. Look, I mean, there, there, there's a... WWE will try to tell you that, like, it's, you know, the Daniel Bryan thing, you know, was all part of the plan, but you could see that there was a point in the late in the point of the year prior where they had pulled the plug on him and they decided that they were going to give up on him as being a, a main event guy and they shuffled him back and he was doing tag matches with CM Punk at the pay-per-view. Um, so yeah, the volatility of the crowd, you know, and, and the organic, you know, cheering of the crowd is, is what ended up forcing their hand. But that's what I'm saying but is they, they don't... get everything they want. When they cry, they get what they want. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? That's, that's not just, true at all. hundred percent. It's true. It's hundred percent no, true. Them. If that was, if that was true, well, look, Rusev I... wouldn't have a 19 loss pay-per-view losing streak he's also Rusev was one of the most over guys in the company follow his twitter follow his twitter that's why he's not over 100 percent. that's why he's not over because he, he says that, stuff on twitter again, bashes not, vince non-stop what they want. he said bury me softly dead man as yeah, soon as he you was you, he's not don't... you're not that's the same thing with Dolph. that's uh, why and, they t- and, and, and i'll and tell you a story right now that's different not than what ronda suppo- rousey's doing it Ron, okay there's a big <laughs> difference between yeah. rusev and ronda rousey <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think it's. Um. I don't think we can draw conclusions from like what someone tweets based on how things play out on TV. Oh, I, don't I think so. Well, so no, I, 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 and I, I've talked about this. Like, if you see somebody not getting to where you think they are as a fan watching a so and so, you know, Dolph Ziggler, whoever, it's not just what happens in the ring and the response. It is everything backstage and their relationship and what happens there too. This is for real. It's not just what's on the screen and their performance. Right. It, it's a business. You know. And and it is like you know you say the the tweets like that can be a window in what that is. So you're I, yeah, I don't think Matt's wrong a, there. A well, do you know do you know not a big re- the, here's here's a true story that and I won't say how I know this but so do you remember when Dolph Ziggler was coming out and doing the entrances of everyone and saying this is what you want you want all this mm-hmm. the reason why is because years ago he jokingly walked by Triple H. And said the Triple H, yeah, I don't know, maybe if I fucking flex and spit water out, I'll get a title shot like that. And Triple H got pissed off about it and started squashing the shit out of him. So it's just it's yeah. how you treat the company. And Rusev is awesome. He he's an awesome worker. He's cool as shit. He's but when you open your mouth up like that, the company knows every single one of you are replaceable. Mm-hmm. Every single okay, one of you then, are then replaceable. Samoa Joe. Shinsuke Nakamura, literally both those guys were massively over, and they both got squashed three pay-per-views. I don't think Samoa Joe was ever over. No, no, no. Samoa Joe has not been squashed. An L is not a squash. 
Uh, Samojo has been dominant in in every. every you gave major him three match. main event pay per views with with AJ Styles. Yeah, like how is that yeah, getting three squashed? losses? Not I everyone's going to be champ. People... No, technically he won by DQ that one. I mean, in my mind, no one, everyone who is on TV is in good standing. Yes. If you're, yeah. if what you're were in you bad saying? standing, yeah. you're off TV. What were you saying to me last night? If they're on TV, it's okay? No, no. If they're, if they're, if they're in WWE, I think. Oh, they're in... Yeah. If yeah they're, they, oh, they must be miserable because they're in WWE, but they're doing a match on main event. Yeah. They're, they're happy they're in WWE. If they didn't yeah. want to be in WWE, they they'd ask leave. for the release well, I'm, like I'm Ty Dillinger, many and they would go try to find some greener many pastures. Many you know, Joe and they is where leave. he should they're be. They're happy where they are. Yep. Rusev is happy where he's at. Tyler Breeze is happy where he's at. EC3 is happy where he's at. No, I don't Sorry. think Tyler Breeze is happy where you he's at. You don't know. We he's don't know. We did as much that he's not happy where he's at. We don't know that. Then we'll see where he goes. And that's happy, and, that, and, and, and just like with anybody in a in a company that's not happy with the company they're in, there's plenty of people that are just dealing with the company they're in and, and not going and finding something better uh, and betting on themselves like a Cody Rhodes or somebody, right? Uh, you know, it, it's up to Tyler Breeze when he figures out, asks for his release, doesn't renew his contract, whatever the case may be. Like we're seeing... There's a lot of other options. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, but but the original argument here was wrestling fans always get what they want, and they do. The no, we've we've worked about three conversations. We don't. <laughs> you do. So I have a thought on this one. Oh, okay. No, we don't. Yes, you do. I, don't, I have a thought Matt, on this. Wrestling Matt. fans want Rusev to be champion. It's I, I, never happened. But that's I, because of how he acts. Yeah, yeah. 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 If it's, 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 it's because I'm not of saying how he acts. Music. Well, it's also more than just what the fans want is what we're trying to say, Mike. Yeah, uh, but then don't make the well, argument make, wrestling fans always get what they, they want because did. they don't. Re- 90% wrestling of fans don't okay. always get what they and want. Wrestling fans get will will get what they want if they make enough noise, a la Daniel Bryan. Well, unless Vince no, doesn't like unless Vince doesn't like what's going if, on. If, unless the wrestler has put themselves in position not to be in that spot. Exactly. Like you're talking Shinsuke, he was he was in a main event at WrestleMania for the title. Yeah. Uh, how many how many other and now wrestlers? Now he's barely going to be on the free show. Uh, but that right. happens to everyone. Uh, Lots no, of guys get a chance to go. Play. Shinsuke main, Nakamura gets a chance. He three. goes to the main event at WrestleMania. It doesn't work out. AJ Styles gets a one-on-one match at WrestleMania. Now he's on WrestleMania every single year. AJ Styles made it work. Nakamura, I'm sorry. It didn't work. Here's another thought while we're on the topic. All right? Uh, what well, we're talking about Last thing before wrestling we fans getting what they want. Yes. Do you think WWE regrets pulling the trigger on Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30 because... It gave the impression that if you fans, if you complain loud enough, we'll give in. You can get your way. If you complain loud enough, you cause enough trouble at the shows. If you chant somebody else's name while we're doing somebody else's match, you'll get your way. And that getting, giving the fans their way, giving Daniel Bryan that moment at WrestleMania 30 was the wrong thing long term from WWE's perspective. But I think that's not WWE. I think that's just the world now. If you just get anything going trending, you have to change it. You have to change literally everything. You know, like there's like there's like for example for stand up and stuff like Kevin Hart with the Oscars, everything like that. Like literally, if as long as you just start the ball rolling and you're like, well, fuck, now we have to. Yeah. It's just, well, you got to you got to apply pressure at the right points. Like right. if you can get look what happened with uh, the fabulous Moolah. Battle Royal. The ta- yeah. They didn't. Well, they didn't, they didn't pull their net. Pull Moolah's name from that Battle Royal because the fans raised a stink on, you know, on social media. They pulled it because the sponsors got upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the money, money and that's what, and that probably is the Kevin Hart thing. You know that you bring up too. You know, well, you I start mean, getting the advertisers it, involved in the money, the money pushers. All right, that's right. going to cost some change. On that Sorry. point, and you know, and you know, if you don't like what's going on on Monday nights, on Tuesday nights, soon to be Fridays, because we win the Monday Tuesday war, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> or wherever else, you know where you can go. When well, you can go, to Blackrock Wrestling. We'll talk about that in a moment. But it, you can also go to help out our friends and see some very familiar faces if you watched on Monday night over at IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network. A lot of good stuff and more coming this week as soon as I can get into the editing bay and get some of it (laughs) together for you guys. We got it. We got it. We got it uh, on deck for you. Uh, Black Diamond Wrestling, Prospect Pro Wrestling. Again, a lot of familiar faces there from Monday night in that security force. Uh, You know, you mentioned the main event. Here they are uh, at WrestleRex. 
down there at the Rex Theater. Look at that. No barricades. What would you call it, Matt, down there at that show? Scary but fun. Scary but fun. <laughs> you can go check out all this stuff. A lot of great clips over on the IndieWrestling.us Facebook page and on the YouTube page. Uh, we're pulling clips like this. And you can find out so much more over at IndieWrestling.us. Inclu- including um, over there, we do have a great interview that we posted this last week um, from DJ Z. Uh, we talked to him. Burr, burr, burr. Thank you in studio, cashing Be up with free, him. Free JJZ, the free agent, uh, and uh, you know he's he's coming up this weekend at IWC's 18 show. The hottest um, free agent in professional wrestling. Hottest free agent in professional wrestling. We talked to him just uh, <laughs> hours before he teamed with uh, uh, CMLL Sam Adonis and Pittsburgh's own, uh, taking on the Lucha Brothers, Pentagon Junior. and Ray Phoenix. So. Go check out all that stuff. Great interviews and so much more at IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network. You can check out stuff for free for new subscribers at IndieWrestling.network or a seven-day trial over there and catch up all kinds of fun stuff. We're filming Rise this week. Uprise, I'm sorry. Uprise with a Y? Yeah, that works. Uh, A lot of great matches there. A lot of up-and-coming talent on that that you guys can check out. They'll be on the network very, very soon as well. So thank you, everybody for checking out that and supporting indie wrestling. Speaking of indie wrestling or other companies in wrestling, Matt, you, you have, what we were talking about, I got two Matt's here. Hold on. Matt light. Okay. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Sorry about that. <laughs> Matt, how are you doing with black craft? Matt Carlin's no, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you're not on video, Matt light is, is on brand tonight with the black. Craft. Oh yeah. I got, I got, a, I got a point out here. Shirt. Look at that. They're representing yes. the company. So, I'm sell out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're not selling out. You're buying in. That's all right. I didn't even know what I said. I said that's I. I meant to say that's right, but I'm still hungover. Sorry. But you were uh, what were we saying? Creative director? Sure. <laughs> well, whatever you want to call me. Listen, there's there's, there's such a rigid corporate structure at Blackcraft. Well, just, I mean, there's four guys that run the company, right? Yeah. And I'm one of them. Yeah. So that's and I just say creative director just so uh, my parents don't know I'm not making any money. Okay. So I'm like, yeah, I'm creative director. They're like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Why do you why do you still have a roommate? It doesn't matter, mom. Like, I'm creative director, okay? It's not my roommate, it's my assistant. R- right, it's my right. it's my associate. <laughs> He's he, my secretary. He does my taxes. No, it's it, it, an uh, in-house accountant. Blackcraft's been awesome, man. You know, we've ran uh three shows so far. The first one obviously we did in Pittsburgh. I and I was there. It was it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh we did one. We we uh every time I die had their festival and Buffalo, we did that show. That was sold out. And then we started to do these uh, invasions that we started with uh, uh, Destiny Wrestling up in Canada. So we went up there. We brought half of our roster, and uh, we went to battle with them. And uh, we got a lot of things coming up. Uh, WrestleMania weekend, we're part of the uh, the collective with GCW. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So that's in Jersey City. Check it out. Uh, it's really good, man. Hey, look, there's us right there. There's uh, Matt Justice. Who actually won our first ladder match, and uh, which I don't—if you guys didn't see that, that was pretty sweet because he had to. Uh, uh, he won, and when you get the little chalice, you can join the cult. Uh, so we have Doug Bradley <laughs> who plays Pinhead, and uh, he took the chalice, spit it in his face, and uh, it was it was pretty sweet, man. Oh, here it is, right here. Yeah, yeah the, uh, actually, this entire match is up on the Blackcraft YouTube page. If you want yeah, to check it yeah, out. We, we give out some free matches. Uh, if you want to check out all our stuff, uh, blackcraftwrestling.com. We have our pay-per-views up there. Mm-hmm. And uh, Matt was actually just on uh, Raw last night mm-hmm. as a No Way Jose getting slammed into the wall. So that was cool. <laughs> a lot of fun stuff. Eh? And, and, and uh, great actual, also catching up with uh, uh, Matt Justice a couple months months ago uh up in youngstown at our show too yeah so he's doing- he's great man he, he's really good we like him a lot man um so you know it, it's been it's been pretty cool to see like you know this promotion kind of grow up it, it you know it's 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 got a, a different kind of vibe to it yeah like it, you know it was kind of like i, I kind of described because people people were asking me about it and some were you know uncomfortable with like the black crap persona and everything right just right for personal beliefs or whatever yeah but but it's, it's but don't but don't have a gangrel t-shirt on though yeah <laughs> yeah he's right. a real vampire did you know that i he's yeah that vampirism's <laughs> real man yeah um 
<laughs> but still, it was it, it's kind of got that Lucha Underground, like, this is a world, these are the rules, right? Yeah. Kind of being set up to this that I really liked from the first uh, edition there. Yeah, we're, 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 it's almost like a live-action horror film is how we're trying to treat it. And uh, we, we just want to do something different because right now uh, – for professional wrestling, if you're if you're a fan of professional wrestling, it's never been better, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you own an organization or a, a fed, it's never been worse <laughs> <laughs> because there's there's competition everywhere. So you have to find ways to set yourself apart. And you know, like if you're having the same guys that are on, you know, NXT or Impact or whoever we end up or that used to be on WWE, it's like yeah, but what are they doing here? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So we're cre- our storylines are more almost theatrical driven. And uh, I mean, it's so fun uh, to be able to have Doug Bradley. I mean, he's a legend. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many people can say that like pinhead is their Vince McMahon of their company? You know, usually <laughs> it's just a guy that, you know, works at the bank and, and, and he's also involved with wrestling. So like, you know what I mean? Like I, it's, I, it's awesome. Man. I think I watched one of those last week. in Texas. Did, did you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it's, I mean, and yeah, if, Mr. McLemore, the banker, is it? <laughs> and we, and we, I mean, we, we, we spend <laughs> a, a shit ton of time and money involved with this because, you know, the way that we look at it is we're in it for the long haul. We don't want to just do it, you know, uh, like most places, which is the most cost effective ways. And, you know, we're not cutting shortcuts and, and we do a lot of cool stuff because black craft clothing, uh, is, is what got us there. So, you know, we have a lot of bands coming to shows, which is crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you, uh, have, you have a different kind of support than most Yeah, it's do. like if Warped Tour was in a ring, which we actually got offered to do that this year. Um, mm-hmm. We said no, but uh, just because it's like, yeah, like like I saw how they did stand up there at Warped mm-hmm. Tour, and nobody cares to do it. And I feel like at Warped Tour, nobody would care about, you know, the wrestling. Because that was our big thing is we want to have music band. Oh, there you go. There's Ronnie Radke from Falling in Reverse. So when we announce these bands and stuff, we don't announce them until after our show is almost sold out mm-hmm. because we want real wrestling fans to give the wrestling reaction. You don't want somebody who's there for a Ronnie Radke concert necessarily, but it's an enhancement. Right. Because yeah. if they're in the shot and they're and they're not reacting to what's going on, they'll be it makes bored during the match weak. and then excited during the concert. Yeah. It's yeah. like, so we want to be able to have like, oh shit, we have these guys too, you know? So it's just, we like to, it's like a house party pretty much for for gothic dorks you know (laughs) (laughs) there was a lot of man if you thought you saw black shirts generally at uh at at wrestling shows like there it was it was like it was the audience at this at the first one i attended was like you were at a rock concert yeah you were ozfest yeah but but let's be honest because i got this text message so often and i was laughing so hard it was Bro, I've never seen so many hot chicks at a, at a wrestling event in my life. <laughs> so, like, I literally was backstage. I was in Gorilla, and I was sending people, and I was like, hold on a second. And I took my <laughs> headsets on, and I started walking around. I was like, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, it's, I mean, it's it's so fun. And, and, you know, like, Bobby Shubinsky is, you know, the owner of Black Craft, and, and he's been so awesome with it. He, pretty much anything I want to do, he's like, go ahead. Whatever you want to do. And and the show at uh, WrestleMania weekend is going to be unreal. Uh, what we have planned uh, is definitely going to steal the show. And that is a weekend where you got, uh, you, you know, talk about the worst worst thing about being a, a promotion these days. You've got a lot of competition. I know a lot of stuff. I, somebody recently asked me, like, well, what are we going to do for X? Because AIW a- and everybody's been right. grabbed up and NXT and everything, right? And it's like, well. AEW. Did I just do it again? Yeah, um, I'm gonna keep doing it. Uh, thank, thank you for correcting me. But, uh, but, but, I always said like, well, look who makes a splash WrestleMania weekend because it is it is the time for everybody to kind of stick out. And you yeah. guys are gonna be there trying to stick out above yeah. the Joey Janellas and the Impacts, and, and we're following them. And yeah, yeah, and you're in the same building. We're so. in the same building, and we're following them. But I just feel like we're. But my favorite thing is like because everyone's like, oh, are you trying like Blackcraft? What's your goal? Are you trying to compete? I'm like. No, like I don't believe in that whole competition because it's like you can like everyone. You can mm. like certain things. For for our example, like I act like like our Blackcraft wrestling, it's like a horror film. Like you can watch a comedy, which is like Joey Ryan's penis party, and then you can which sounds mm. amazing by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh I love Joey. 
and and then you have ours. So it's like you can have the best of both worlds, and like you can eat your cake, you know. So you, 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 you think like follow. the um, sorry. Go ahead. Let's say uh, I, I, I think the Indies have kind of caught on to this mindset that you have too. That like yeah. you can't just you can't just run out your guys and go to your matches thing. It's not going to cut it anymore. You've got to um, you got to make yourself distinctive. So yeah. you know, Joey's got to do his kind of like pseudo nostalgic thing, and um, you know Joey Ryan does his you know kind of sexy comedy thing and then you guys do your thing and yeah everyone kind of you know gives a different angle on it it's cool yeah it's 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 been it's been an awesome experience being able to meet these you know these wrestlers and talk to them about stuff and it's weird because it's like you know from somebody who grew up a big wrestling fan that really had no connections with any wrestlers whatsoever to like every day like john morrison calling you and texting you i'm just like hi john morrison <laughs> Like, yes, whatever you want. Like, it's just weird. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. but like now it's just like, oh, that's John. Like, and I hit ignore. Yeah. Like, it's like, cause you know, it, it, it's been such an awesome experience. I Wait, you just a bit to ignore John. John's yeah. Text. <laughs> yeah. Dude, cause he talks on the oh, phone. He's going to talk to me about his abs again. Oh man. <laughs> he, he's a hot dude, man. I'm not, I'm just saying like, he's a bad dude. So, oh, I'm going to tell a story that's really funny. Um, so Morrison was getting off off stage at the end of the show, calling everyone emo. Well, he called them yeah, emus, yeah. dorks and nerds or whatever. Did you say emus? Emus. <laughs> and falling in reverse was supposed to be on stage already. And the whole band is up there. And Morrison is still there on the mic, like playing <laughs> fake guitar, singing. And Ronnie is backstage like, get him the fuck off the mic. He's like, I'm trying to perform. And I told Morrison about that. And he thought it was the funniest. He's just the biggest goofball dude. Mm -hmm. So like to be able to have him involved with this has helped us so much. Cause like he's, he's one of those big names that isn't in it for the paycheck mm -hmm. because you deal with a lot of those guys. And that's like, well, we might use you once or twice, but like he'll call with ideas. Yeah. Like he'll be like, Hey, what do you think about this for this match, for that match, for this? And like to have somebody invested like that, that just doesn't, you know, just reel it in and do their match and get out of there. Like that's, that's what we want. Like we, we made it clear that, you know, you're going to get paid if you come to black craft, if you're going to work, like we're never going to be assholes about that. But like, if you don't want to be invested here, you can work for any other company right now. You know what I mean? So most of the people we have, are in our core, so it's been great. That's awesome. Uh, I do have I do have a couple of questions in the chat room apparently about about Blackcraft. You want to field? I don't know if you have answers to some of them. Yeah, or yeah, not. yeah. Uh, you know, at this level and at this time with everything, as I know you're in between shows here and gearing up for WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. So I'll see if I somebody was asking about uh, uh, if you guys are going to try to get nine inch uh, ice nine kills again. Uh, yeah, we'll probably have them back again. We'll have them. Uh, we the first show we did was uh, falling in reverse, and then our pre-show we had uh, what was the uh, it lives it breathes. But yeah, Bobby's super close with that band, mm -hmm. so we'll we'll be involved with them for sure. Uh, El Paso uh, McZombie is asking <laughs> uh, when is Blackcraft going to book Pastor William Ever Aver? I don't know who that is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we is have either. we have a guy named. Uh, this is probably my favorite gimmick we have. Yeah, uh, his name is uh the Reverend Connor uh Braxton or Connor Braxton, yeah. And he actually uh went to Black and Brave uh and studied through Seth Rollins and we have him coming out with like an offering mm -hmm. and, oh, and, nice. and he gives you the little Jesus, its the little tasting oh, things. Yeah. And he's been so funny because we we had him do one of those like, oh my god you know, Reverend Connor saved my life for only twenty dollars. Yada yada. We have an infomercial that if you call, it's a legit number. If you call the number, you get a voicemail from him, and he tells you when his next shows are and it, like the next healing. So it's it's been super cool to be able to use this. And like, I get that people are like, oh well, Black Craft is you know satanic. We're not for that. And I'm like, it's a show. You know what I mean? Like you saw uh, the Blair Witch Project. Are you a right? fan of the Undertaker? Yeah, yeah. that's that's like where right. Like anybody it's can like start. just just yeah. enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, it's a yeah. show. You know, we're not sacrificing animals at the show. We're not. You know, we could. <laughs> but, you you know, bite the head know, off I, a bat. What's it? 
could have somebody bite the head off a bat. We could do that. Ozzy, we could bring back Ozzy. I mean, why not, right? Yeah. I mean, if we got to, if we're going to have Ozzy Osbourne, we got to book him soon because he's on his way out. Oh, so. yeah. 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 <laughs> um, isn't he doing another Oz, Ozzy tour, Ozfest tour or something? Uh, it, uh, lately. Uh, Alex out there in California, uh, he, he, he was sad that the uh, the show out there got canceled. But you guys are. Reaper's I mean, Revenge. Yeah. We're, we'll be you back. You guys will out be back there. around. I, I heard rumblings about we, you guys. We had some issues out there. Yeah. Um, uh, because of some issues that happened at, at the first show. Um, but yeah, we'll be back in the LA Anaheim area mm-hmm. right now. We're working on, uh, um, Texas, uh, Vegas, nice. Boston, uh, Pittsburgh will be Pittsburgh at the end of the summer again. Good. That's going to be our WrestleMania pretty much is burning bridges. Uh, Ohio, uh, we're going to be, uh, maybe Phoenix. And then we're definitely going back to California. Um, but one of the main things we really have to work <laughs> on is having, more shows more often and yeah. I want Pittsburgh to be the home base so that we can film a lot of stuff and have footage mm-hmm. to carry over. You know what I mean? So absolutely. that's what we're looking to do. I mean, half of you, most of you guys are based here, so that makes absolute sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and a lot of the, the talent you're using on a regular basis. Uh, Toddy, our friend from Thrifty, uh, you may know him uh, if you watched uh, at least the first couple of shows with Blackcraft as the guy that's flipping off every wrestler. Ryan Thompson? <laughs> uh what's that is that ryan thompson no toddy toddy tendera oh okay he's uh he, he was wearing a, a good like like track suit up there in buffalo right and it was right on the corner flipping people off oh yeah and i think he got called something that got deleted off of the replay uh so oh, really i believe so by who um i don't know but he's he is mentioning reverend connor tried to bless him in, in buffalo and he gave him the middle finger that's amazing. And, and commentary had called him out <laughs> really <so. laughs> oh do we have the best commentary too uh Johnny Laquasto mm-hmm. uh, from Cali. He's a really funny comic, man. And like, as soon as I got involved and we started putting that together, I mean, I think that's like the biggest, the, the biggest thing for wrestling is you need a great commentary team and uh, video production. If you don't have that, then the show sucks. Don't slack on referees too, guys. Oh, yeah. I mean, not that you don't know no, that. No, I know but that. I'm just saying to Indies and Joe, please don't slack on referees. Oh, if you have bad that, referees. That, that, don't, that don't know where a hard cam is. They, oh, and they snap, dude. Like, the, the workers will be like, well, and they help you, too, with the ladders underneath and stuff. They'll yeah, tell you where. Yeah. It's just like, if you don't have a, uh, a ref that doesn't know what they're doing, you're screwed. Uh, Kyle in the chat room is also, please keep an eye out for Atlanta, please. Atlanta? Yes. Call out for Atlanta. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Kyle yeah. will be there. All right. Well, hey, uh, please check out Black Hat Wrestling. You got stuff going on with Matt Light comedy, of course. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll get all the plugs in later. I mean, we'll just look them up. You'll you'll find everything going. Yeah. On. So. And uh, so with that, I want to give a shout out to our good friends at Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com, right up here uh, in Beachview, in Pittsburgh, in the Carnegie East End PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, so if you're in catching a team there, because I know some people you guys travel to catch your teams. I mean, I know some friends that go get uh, their pens tickets up in New York, for instance, like Mike, right? Mm-hmm. You still with me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> go check them out. And uh, there's a Port and Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time. And if you're not, because I know we got a lot of people, like we say, we got a lot of people all across here. Uh, as just demonstrated in the chat room. Uh, if you want to help, obviously, we started Slice on Broadway, just had on Broadway here in Beastview, and, and they've already expanded so much. <clears throat> mayhem bump uh but if you want to help them out if you got a broadway in your town please take a uh, picture of the street sign and let them know you want to slice on your broadway this is the unofficial um uh promotion we're doing for them uh at pgh underscore slice on the twitter tweet them let them know the mayhem sent you and let them know you want to slice on your broadway wherever that may be across the continental united states whoa, whoa, whoa. sorry hawaii uh so go check them out slice on broadway.com and let them know the mayhem sent you. And please do not kick down the door or threaten them with a bone or anything kick like that. In the door. <laughs> don't kick, kick it in. Don't kick it. Don't kick it. Kick Thank it you. in. We will be back with Mayhem Mania. Mainstream Matt is already setting up the board off camera. I can hear him fumbling around, ready to rewrite everything. Stacking the card. Stacking the card. <laughs> and and it's gonna. I, I'm seeing requests in the chat room already, and uh, it's gonna be fun. We'll be right back with Mayhem Mania after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com.
We are back. It is uh, time for some Mayhem Mania. Our guest is still with us, uh, Matt Light, comedian, director of content and shenanigans over at <laughs> Black Craft Wrestling. Sounds better than I mean, what I call myself. <laughs> director of shenanigans. I mean, you know. That'd be a sweet business card, though. Director of shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. I just can't spell shenanigans. <laughs> well, there, I think it autocorrects. The, yeah? Yeah. If yeah. you type it in yeah, Google. I missed the clipboard, the little clip. From Microsoft Word. Clippy? Is that his clip? name? Clippy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was his name. We need him. <laughs> we need him. Now right more than ever. We, we need him. Just Clippy. correct me from saying everything that's not politically correct. I mean, like, did you mean... <laughs> Matt Light, did yeah. you mean that you want to look up? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I don't even want to say a joke. Anymore. Mainstream, You're Matt. comedian. You make the jokes. I'm just going to sit here. Hey, uh-huh. how are you? It's time for main, may, Mayhem it's time Mania. For mainstream Mania. Main, mainstream Mayhem Mania. <laughs> Hi, how are the you? The board is ready. The board is prepped. It has been forged by our friends at Dark Forge Studios. Um, let's um, let's explain it to Matt Light. Okay. Your, As we would to a child. Do you have okay, your... Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, that's how we explain it to everybody. All I'm doing is recycling jokes from like the last three years. Uh, okay, this is Mayhem Mania. It's kind of a competitive thought experiment. The object is to create the best WrestleMania card possible, but we must operate in the side the bounds of the current reality in which... We all live. This is not fantasy booking. It's like reality booking. You have to operate under the same rules Vince McMahon operates under. So everyone has to come in their current contractual, physical, uh, uh, emotional, psychological, um, whatever, pharmacological uh, state. So basically you're Vince McMahon with um, infinite resources and zero self-control. Uh, and you have decided you're going to make the greatest WrestleMania of all time. But you can only do one move. There are five people. We're each going to make one move, one change to the card. Now, you might note that there's a line here on this card. There is a undercard. Talk about that in a second. And there's a super card. If a match survives three rounds on the undercard without being changed in any way, it graduates into permanence on the super card. So the goal is to get eight matches graduated up into the super card while we work with the eight matches down here. Um, last week, Sorgi, we had a new match graduate to the super card. It was so exciting. You might have noted already, Sorg's match, Elias versus the Velveteen Dream, graduated the super, super card like a rocket. He made it the first week. No one touched it. It graduated. Done. Now, the next match to graduate is the uh, courtesy of Bobby FJ Town. Congratulations, Bobby, for your creation. Try Conics, Zolina Vega, Peyton Royce, and Billy Kay versus Try Pirates, Kyrie Sane, Io Shirai, and Asuka. So let's bring in Bobby FJ Town real quick, Sorgi. All right, here we Eliminator. go. Bobby, there you Bobby, are. Bobby, you've done good. Good job, buddy. I'd like to use my eliminator. Uh, steady there, Tiger. Steady. All right? <laughs> <laughs> One thing at a time. Now, when a match graduates to the supercard, the person who creates the match gets a kind of a series of rewards. So, Bobby, the first thing we got to take care of is, uh, you see, uh, there's an open slot here on our undercard. I'm do so would you... first. I am so fucking lost. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> like, huh? This is good. This is good. Don't this worry. Good. Don't worry. You're, we haven't lost you're, one yet. You're... Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Last week, a mascot lion did this. You can do it. All right. <laughs> all right, Bobby. I, I get it. Yes. You, you want to make it? You want to use your eliminator? Yes. I want to use my eliminator right now. See, whenever, over the course of the game, we award certain things. One of the things we award is you an eliminator. Shut up. I'm trying to explain it to Matt Light. <laughs> Um, give him what he wants. Basically, you lose. You use give an eliminator. You can get rid of someone from being <laughs> used in mayhem mania. Want. So if there's someone that you, well, you people, give shut up. Um, so if you, you know, you don't want to see someone used. You know, you don't want RoboCop booked in a match on mayhem right. mania. This is you a use discussion. your eliminator on RoboCop. No one can use him for the entirety of mayhem mania. And anyway, the only people on this board are anyone. You can't eliminate someone who's on the card. You can't. Excellent question. Only someone who's not on the card can be eliminated. Okay. But if someone is on the card and perhaps someone takes them off, then if you have an eliminator that you're holding on to, you can pounce like a jungle cat and you can eliminate like them. Has you it. Like Liddy. Like Liddy. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. here are the people who have been eliminated so far. Don't blame oh me. God. These are other people. Ric Flair. Jeff Jarrett. Drake Maverick. John Cena. Randy Orton. Brock Lesnar, Triple H, Bobby Fish, Charlotte Flair. You can't use any of those people. Sorry, Matt. Um, Bobby FJ Town oh, received an, another eliminator on for your mark. getting oh, his I who I want to eliminate match now. to gra- no. graduate. <laughs> Bobby, no, let's um, get this out of the way. Tell uh, us who you want to eliminate. Enzo Amore. Oh, right. oh thank you. Oh, Take him off. Yes. Bobby. Thank you. Thank we you. Thank you. Enzo. Nope. 
Dan Sandwich. Now, you see, a couple weeks ago, Enzo Dan Sandwich was here. Yeah. And he tr- he wanted to book Enzo Mori into a match against AJ Styles. And we let him do it because um it could happen, right? Vince no. McMahon could say, Enzo, <laughs> here's $10 million. Come yeah. to WrestleMania and have a match with AJ Styles. Yeah. And Enzo would come and do it. So that's sure. where there's a flexibility here. Okay. That you can operate this is in. bullshit. Quiet, you. Robocop's still out there. Don't be too sad. All right. <laughs> Right, I'm now, using Bobby, the shock master. It's good quiet you. He's retired. Um, <laughs> Bobby, good job oh. with the eliminator. I could have I could have eliminated Vince McMahon, but you know. But you don't want to no, lose that oh. sweet no. hot Ooh, Miz, Shane Mr. Shane Miz versus job. Shane and Vince. Four That's the match we home. want. Hey, go feed those ducks. Bobby, you yes. must create a match to fill this hole, and then we will get down to business of what oh, we have okay. to work with here. Uh, I am gonna go with no help in Daniel the studio Bryan audience. Okay. And Eric Rowan. Ooh. Versus. They are active superstars. They are not injured. They're just waiting. Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper. Sounds good to me. Luke Harper made they, his. Uh, re- he came back in the house show. Yeah, came weekend. back in the house show. Yeah. Okay. And Bray Wyatt's just waiting. Yep. I don't know where he is. He's waiting. He's lurking. He's hiding under your bed, Bobby. He's. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, now, Bobby. Yes. What the other, the third reward that you get? I know you get to hand really out reward. some punishment. Uh, and what this will be is uh, one of our players this week will have a player, a, a wrestler, forced upon them that they must use. Uh, Bobby, I must regret that Brandon is playing this week, but he he sent me a note about his uh, move, so yeah. you will not be able to punish Brandon. Not that you would want to do. Yeah, that, it's because not. We it's all not love Brandon. Brandon. That's not fair. You can punish <laughs> one of our four players this week. Ty Cross, um, Dave Podner, Matt Light, or Alex Cars. You must choose. Who will be I punished? I am basing this on somebody who tried to circumvent his own rule <laughs> and come back. Oh, I'm sorry, going. Alex. How dare you? But it, it's a fun punishment. It's I fun concur. Punishment. Yes. Don't it's reveal the punishment yet. It's a punishment. It's okay. a punishment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorg has the punishment ready punishment to go. Alex will worse. reveal it whenever we come to your uh, <laughs> come to your spot. Okay. Let's get down to um. The players here, but first I will run down the card, um, the undercard as we have it real quick. So it's okay. We have it on this marker board. Hang on. Okay. All right. The official pointer provided oh, by I Matt love Light. It. There you go. Love it. We're on brand. Okay. Yes. That's here we right. go. Here is here is the undercard as it stands right now. Uh, thanks to Bobby, we now have Daniel Bryan and Rowan the Recycler versus Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper. Um, the Kings of Wrestling, Cassius Ono and Cesaro versus Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic, created by El Paso McZombie. Leo Rush versus Kofi Kingston, created by Gannon Jones Jr.? Yeah. Yeah. War Raiders versus Nikki Cross and Rhea Ripley, created by Duke Davis. AJ Styles versus Finn Balor, created by Litty. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Matt Riddle, created by Cornell from Pit Fight. Seth Rollins versus Aleister Black versus Ricochet, created by Brandon. And finally, Mia Yim versus Becky Lynch, created by Tina. Okay. As I mentioned, we got five players this week. Brandon will go first. He uh, sent me his move via direct message. And then after that, we will have Ty. And then we'll have Dave Podner. And then we'll have Matt Light. And then we'll have Alex Carr's batting cleanup as per the rules and stipulations of the Alex Cars rule of which Alex Cars has been abusing uh, for weeks and weeks here on Mayhem Mania. But don't worry, he's going to get punished. Okay. Um, Brandon sent me this. I, I, I don't make sure I forget this. You know, so I'm very forgetful. Okay. Okay. Brandon's move is he is getting rid of this match right here. No more Nakamura and Riddle. That is being deleted, and in its place, Brandon wants to create the Miz versus EC3. Discuss. Ooh, not bad, not bad. I don't hate it. That's not a match that I I thought I would want. Mm -hmm. I never would have thought that, but when you put it together, it makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. All right, there we go. Um, And I'll just give everyone a quick reminder on kind of what the uh, rule options are. Matt, you can either... Take a match out entirely and bring in a new match with entirely new wrestlers. Wrestlers, three-way, tag team, whatever. Don't get carried. Don't go making any 20-man battle royals. But, you know, you can explore the 
confines of the reality if you want to. Uh, you can switch one for one. If you want to take like the War Raiders and swap them with Becky Lynch, you could get Becky Lynch versus Crossing Road. War Raiders versus Mia Yim. Um, and I can bring somebody who's not on the card? Yes, you can bring someone in. You can add them to a match. You can make this a four-way. You can make this a three-way. You can add someone to this tag team, make it a handicap. You can do that. You could also use our one-time-only subtract option if you don't like a three-way or something like that or you want to just remove a single person. You can go ahead and remove a single person with the one use only subtract option. Um, so those are kind of the basic idea of what we're going for. Make sense? Great. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Ty Cross for his move. And uh, Podner, you're on deck. Ty, okay. are you and your ducks there? Hi, how's it going? Quack, quack. What's happening, man? <laughs> <laughs> so quick apology. I, I did just walk in my front door. And got settled. Can you run down that match list one more time for me? Oh, God almighty. Oh, All right, fine. Here we go. going to be here forever. Oh, God, Quiet, everybody. Let me explain it you to know you these as are on you the would website. a child. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan versus Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper. The Kings of Wrestling versus Lee and Dijakovic. Leo Rush versus Kofi Kingston. The War Raiders versus Nikki Cross and Rhea Ripley. The Miz versus EC3. Seth Rollins versus Aleister Black versus Ricochet. And Mia Yim versus Becky Lynch. Man, I had a Daniel Bryan match and I lost it. Oh, I hope oh, you had a, a ba- hope you had a backup <laughs> okay, plan. You should always Matt, have a backup that's... plan, Matt. That's very important to have. Yeah. One. Let me see. Mm. Let me see. I will go with. Darn it. Uh, I'll go with what my original match was going to be. I'll take out the War Raiders match. Okay. Oh, how dare you! Of course you did, going right after the main event. All right. the side of it, but uh, yeah. that's just that's the match. Coming at Duke home. just like a steel chair. Contrary, Ty. <laughs> and I guess I'll go, <laughs> I'll go with the, the match that I wanted to do weeks and weeks ago but wasn't able to. Um, I will do straight up Walter versus Samoa Joe. Nice. Walter all caps, man. Got it. Just a note, you should probably introduce him as uh, Rise Tag Team Champion, uh, Ty Cross. I mean, will he really still be we a Tag Team Champion like in that. a couple weeks? I mean, oh, he's probably going to lose us the first chance he gets. I mean, he has at least until uh, WrestleMania weekend with those things, oh, right? Well, congratulations, Ty. Good job. The week after. Is he wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's who a are Rise you? Tag Team Champion. Ty, who was yeah, the wheel there man? There are two rises. It's confusing. All right, never mind. Rise I need to get out to it. Wait, are you the Rise with an I Tag Team Champion? That is complicated. It's a little further it's out than I'm used to. Rikishi was the wheel. Was the Rikishi the wheel man when you stole those tag team titles from the main event? Ty, he could have been. Could have been. Nah, been. The Rock doesn't I... care what he does. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ty. <laughs> Dave Podner, you're up. Ducks. Matt lights on deck. <laughs> Podner, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> for my ducks. <laughs> Podner. Podner. Okay. Hey there, Podner. <laughs> what's up? Okay, so going. With, let's see here. Okay, point of clarification. He's got notes, doesn't he? Uh oh. Can I add someone to a three way and make it a tag match? No, you can't or change is that two the. Moves? No, you can't change the configuration of the match. Like, yeah. Okay. Now you can add someone and make it can a tag team. Can you add a stipulation to it? And then make it like one no, versus no one versus two. Yeah. You could do that. No stipulations yet. That's, that, yeah, that's okay. Kind of the okay, that's fine. That's fine. I have. I have. So I, I made five moves yeah. just in case, and uh, all but right two of them got stuff. already killed off. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have so, a third match? All right. I'm going to add someone to the Lilo Rush Kofi match. Oh, good. Here we go. Because it's with those two, I think it's still too slow. So <laughs> I want to add Mustafa what? Ali. Nice. Oh, oh, boy. That's the fastest match in the world. Speedy. Dig. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Thanks, Dave. Imagine the spots they can pull off in under six minutes. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> I just want to see all Leo, and, yeah. <laughs> Leo and Mustafa Ali exactly. chase each other around while Kofi throws pancakes to everybody. Okay. Thanks, Dave. He's not going to say you're welcome. All right. Nothing? Great. Good talk. Yeah. Huh. All right. Matt? Well. Uh, How are you feeling about this? Good. So there's already two triple threat matches. Yeah, there are. So we have oh, to we make got... one a yeah. fatal four-way. Yeah, exactly. I, so I, I agree. Brandon's match. Yeah, this one. I'm gonna add Will Osprey. Can't do that. Can't no. Do that. Why can't I do that? Will Osprey's under contract, under contract in New Japan. Oh, it has to be contract. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So then I'm gonna buy time. Okay. 
and unless look. It, unless it's Kenny Omega, in which case we wait to see if he's under contract. <laughs> We're still well, we all knew he was going to sign with All Elite, right? So there's really no point in like uh, pretending that. that we could I'm use him for that one week We're where he was at home playing video games, right? I mean, that was pointless. Right. 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 It's like ordering a breakfast sandwich and then you get it. And you're ready to take a bite of it, though. and someone just comes along and they just take your breakfast yeah, sandwich away. Multiple, it's as if you're ready to eat your breakfast sandwich, and the young bucks come in and just take your breakfast so sandwich away. And then you've got no breakfast sandwich, and you were so you, looking forward to it. You can't touch the super card, correct? Can't touch the super can't card. Can't touch the super sorry, card. Yeah. All right. Uh, can you add a special guest referee instead? I'm sorry, that's falls under stipulation things in the Patreon. We're just trying to make that. Miz versus EC3. I hate. I will not blame you. I don't like that. Do you have a favorite wrestler? Yeah. Okay. Dolph. No, he's in play. You can use him. Yeah, but he's kind of done he sucks, everything. Huh, right? yeah. yeah, he's kind of done everything. <laughs> I I want okay. I want to bring in. All right, I got it. I'm gonna uh, add to the triple threat match with Leo, Kofi, uh, Braun Strowman. Bingo. Yeah. Good move. Yeah, I think you need. I think you need some muscle you there. You need a base. You yeah, need. Yeah. You need a guy to just something to bounce off. Yeah, of. you just need one <laughs> big ass dude that they can all beat up on. And plus, I don't know anything else. <laughs> I like it. You've done well. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for playing. That was good. That was good. Good move. Good move. All right, let's bring in Alex Cars. I don't get a move. No, you don't. Mm, um, okay. Let's bring in Alex Cars, abuser of the Alex Cars rule. And Alex, um, <laughs> I'm very excited to inform you that. Um, oh, no. What'd, no. You, what'd you do? Sorry, no take backs. Fuck. What? Oh, no. He was under the, the Leon Kofi match. I was going to bring back oh. Nicholas instead. Nah, <laughs> I would have let you do it. Um, um, well, too bad. How about, but hey, Damn. good idea for your eliminator, hey, you eliminator back, guys, huh? as far as we're cool. going. Um, Sorgi. It's time to punish Alex Cars. Give me a moment to reset Sorry, every Alex. time I go to it. <laughs> Alex, you so tonight, Alex, you will be forced to use a wrestler from the wheel of trapped in a main roster tag team. That's right. We've taken about 30 names of uh, people Come who are on, currently Bobby regularly Rude. competing <laughs> in a main roster <laughs> tag Bobby team. Rude. Let's put it up there on the screen for everyone, Sorgi, yeah, so they can uh, give it a good look. Okay. Oh, man. You are you getting, getting a look at this? Are you getting a look at this world? Um, Sorg. Give that wheel a spin. Give it a big go. spin. What a big spin. Just like on. the Wheel of Fortune. And... Oh. 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 Cesaro. Oh, you oh, know what? Out. Cesaro's Let's already go. on the card. Worked he shouldn't out. have been on there. Cesaro. Out. We can't use Cesaro. He's already Wait, on the card. That's an oversight again. on my part. Spin it again. again. Give the wheel another spin. Another spin. Here we go. Here we go. And... Oh. Epico! Epico! Come on. There we go. Alex Cars, congratulations. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought he was released. Uh, no, no, he's still employed. He's free agent. He's around. No, no, he's on he's on the main he's on the main roster. He's on SmackDown. There you go. How are you feeling, Alex? Yes, Alex, how are you feeling? What do you want to do with Epico oh, Cohen? Are you really headlining are you WrestleMania? Everybody quiet. <laughs> no, no help from the studio Matt. audience. Alex has to go this alone. He has to walk alone through this pit of danger. Only he can walk alone. Alex. Side note, Matt, that wheel is super fun to play with. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll post the wheel. Uh, I'll embed the wheel in the article on uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, and you too can right. go play with the so wheel of Trapped in a Main Roster You can punish yourself. You can punish yourself. Wow. <laughs> By playing with you're the wheel all night. That's a euphemism. That's a euphemism. All right, Alex, how you feeling? I feel about um, yourself, Alex. So, am I only allowed to do a move with the person that I've been given? Whatever you do, time? Epico yes. Cologne has to end up written on this whiteboard. How's that? Oh, okay. That, that's that's not entirely terrible. I mean, it could be worse, um, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't. I'm not sure how. Dude, you debut uh, somebody later. <laughs> I can't wait to. I can't wait to a pen swap. a tweet to Epico Cologne. On um, Talking Mayhem Mania oh, okay. coming up on the okay, uh, I got Wrestling Mayhem Show it. YouTube channel. Here we go. All right. Um, this 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 means I get to wait. Am you're I allowed not, to add you're more than one person to yep. a match? Yes. If it's a singles encounter. No, you can't add two singles to a match. You can add a tag team. Ah, crap. Okay. All right. <sighs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um. <laughs> let's see. 
Well, <laughs> apparently Matt Carlin's is ruining me, ruining Tina, Tina's laptop. I just spun it again and got primo. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with this wheel. No, no, no. The wheel is, wheel is fine. It's been properly vetted, so it works great. We spun oh. it. We spun it once, and it landed okay, on his arm. So obviously, the wheel right. was trying to be fair. Every time you spin it, it lands on a wrestler oh, that ends with O. <laughs> All the good ones end in O. Yeah. All right. Okay, I got it. I got my move. All right, good. Let's move. do it. What you got? Let's see what we can do with this. I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, Epico and Primo colognes. I'm going to add them to the, what is it, the Cassius Ono and Cesaro versus Leon Dijakovic. All righty. And that's not a bad move because then they'll yeah, take the not. pin. That's a good move. They take the pin, yeah. I, I think he's just I mean, doing that to I punish think, Garza because he has to make the graphic. I think these guys could throw the colognes <laughs> a very far distance. So I can't deny this. Now, do you want... Do you want Epico in his Shining Stars outfit? Ooh. Yeah, please specify Ooh. the gimmick. Are we going with yeah. Ma- generic oh, jobbing Los colognes? Or are we going with the... Uh, um, <laughs> are we going with Los Matadors? Oh, man. There, <laughs> I was there was say, so much fun. I don't know why they ever went away from that. What flavor of colognes? In a suit or in a matador suit? Or do you just let... I would choose the matadors. Or do you just let... Primo and Epico in a suit. Like ours. Like ours. If you want to make this a little bit more palatable and you want to be Los Matadors... I will allow you to do that. Because we all know it's Epico. Let's leave it as the colognes. It'll be more fun for Garza. All right. <laughs> all right sir. Uh, actually, I th- and also, I think El Torito, or someone that he plays, oh. is tied with Lucha Underground. Uh, oh, yeah, Garza's right. upset. His match was going to graduate tonight. Um, oh, he may or may not have been correct. Oh. <laughs> Hey Garza, he's gonna make that graphic Garza, stick figures. We gotta come back next he's week, man. Make two stick you can make figures, this right, Garza. One with, one with the you can P, make it like, right. And one with the E, like Terrence and Subtract Osh and Stolitz. Hey, hey, All right, Sorgi, let's run down the card here for everybody. Look at this mess. All right, <laughs> Daniel Bryan and it's Rowan versus mess. Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper, created by Bobby F. J. Town. The Kings of Wrestling versus Lee and Dijakovic versus the Colognes, created by Alex. Leo Rush versus Kofi Kingston versus Mustafa Ali versus Braun Strowman, now created by Matt Light. Walter, all caps, versus Samoa Joe, created by Ty Cross. AJ Styles versus Finn Balor, created by Litty. The Miz versus EC3, created by Brandon. Seth Rollins versus Aleister Black versus Ricochet, created by Brandon as well. And finally, Mia Yim versus Becky Lynch, created by Tina. Dave Potter, congratulations. You get an invitation back for next week under the stipulations of the Alex Cars rule. Stay tuned for Talking Mayhem Mania. And um, I don't know. You know what? I'm hoping Alex will hang around because I would like to have Alex as my guest on Talking Mayhem Mania. Alex, how does that sound to you? I'll just beg my way back on. Okay. (laughs) We got I tried that. Guard, Matt either. told me I was blackballed. That's why I haven't paid. <laughs> no, 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 no. We got rules. We got. To, I, I'll talk about it on the show after. Back to you, Sorg. All right. This is me not ready for the next ad because I forgot what it was. But let, hey, you know what? <laughs> We've had five years of mayhem mania. A lot of history there. And uh, those that don't learn from that history is doing the repeat. It like our good friend that helps you out with that at professorbuzzkill.com. He's making le- learning history entertaining, humorous, through his blog and podcast. A lot of great stuff going on over there at professorbuzzkill.com. Go check him out. Another friend of the Mayhem Show. Thanks for uh, supporting the show. All right, guys. It is time to find out what you learned from wrestling this week. Matt Carlins, I know you had a very educational night last night. I'm trying to think. I know I had something good that I learned this week. Uh, I learned that um, booing at one... Booing Ronda Rousey makes me all sweaty. <laughs> yeah, there was a point about it. I looked at my like, watch. It said 9.13, and Matt Carlin's is like, I'm sweaty. I'm sweaty and tired. I'm sweaty How, and tired. What time is it? We're only an hour into the show. I've exhausted myself. What's happening? What's happening? What are you looking at? Do you, you see it? I, I don't know what's Back happening there. Anyways, uh, <laughs> chat room, please uh, chime in with oh, what you okay, learned as well. Uh, so uh, let's go down the let's go down the the Google Hangout line. Alex Cars, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that uh, WWE finally signed Chuck Taylor. Sort <laughs> yes, <of>. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sort of. Not the one that you thought. That was uh, Stokely Hathaway that that 
Did I get the name right there? Yep. That yep. got yep. signed. Wearing, wearing his dream team shirt. That's got amazing. Him with the Street Profits right away. Please. Oh, no. Oh, he'd be <laughs> a great manager. Play. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ty Cross, what did you learn this week? Um, it's, it's another personal one. Oh, we got his I belt. How much more fun I have when I stop caring about what the fans think and just go ahead and be a bad guy. We were up at uh, <laughs> Premier Championship Wrestling, Joe Dabrowski Pro, and uh, we just decided to tell Cleveland how we felt. And I learned once again just how much fun it is to not care. I learned Ty Cross has fans. <laughs> Now. Wow! Oh, I'll say sorry. <laughs> you guys buried the hatchet. I'm sorry. It was literally right there. I had <laughs> and that's, you know what? That's you set up the key. You set up the ball. Uh, you handed me a wiffle bat. You said, "Swing away." <laughs> Swing away. I learned how many people really are into the fact that I have docs because there was an aggressive. There was an aggressive thread. That I just went in and I posted some duck pictures and all the aggression went away and it became super positive. <laughs> so uh, I learned just how much power the pictures of my ducks, unsolicited truly, duck pics, truly <laughs> have on the God, wrestling community. It, here in <coughs> Fuck! This is, I think I oh, witnessed that one. They were asked. That, that's the show title, by the way. They were asked. <laughs> unsolicited <laughs> ducks. Unsolicited duck pics. <laughs> They're the worst solicited duck pics. <laughs> they were solicited. And they brought everyone together. Uh, That's it. Bobby oh, MJ God Town, what'd you learn? Bobby. <laughs> uh, I haven't been on in a long time. What'd you learn, Bobby? <laughs> uh, we, I we, learned we that you. the guardians of the independent scene are, most of them are my friends, even though one of them kicked my puppet one time. That's okay. He kicked me in the face, so. Yeah, and he kicked, he kicked you, too. <laughs> yeah, and now he's on TV. He so. kicks people a lot. He kicks people. That was that was fun. That was a fun Christmas. Uh, Potter, what'd you learn? Tiny Shutter Podcast. I haven't plugged it yet. Thank you, thank you. And also, I didn't realize that we were allowed to bring heavy metal objects on on screen after watching Ty. So I got my I got first of all, there I got, you go. my own he's, heavy got metal his, objects he's got his championship too. To be put on screen wow, myself. But yours are a lot louder than his. <laughs> This, this, is going, this, cha- this is the championship episode. So it is. All right. It is. Look, everybody's we're bringing the gold. Energy, you know? <laughs> Shit. We're doing this. Um, Why not? As Potter, what you learn? After going to Raw, after going to after comparing Raw yet last night from SmackDown from a couple weeks, a couple months ago. Yeah. Anytime Becky doesn't show, the show just sucks a lot more. Oh. <laughs> I got wow. Big Boss Man. <laughs> what? I don't have any on him. Uh, Mad My Mike. Title. Mad Mike. We're getting over to you. Oh, he's got a title too. Yeah, of nice. course. That will be a championship. Absolutely. Um, I, I learned that for the first time in a long time that I can remember, WWE went an entire hour without having a single match. This is true. I didn't an know. entire hour. In person, I, I gotta, it I wasn't bad. I didn't notice. No, we didn't notice. I was there oh, live oh, and I trust no me, clue. It, yeah. If you were watching TV, you noticed. <laughs> well, <laughs> notice. who cares about people watching on TV? I noticed. <laughs> Grant, I'm I watch wrestling a little differently now. Yeah, you true. do, you do a different perspective, of course. Oh, no. Ruth noticed, and Ruth noticed. She's like, it's been a while since they've actually wrestled. <laughs> when has there yep. been a bell? What is this run? a wrestling show? Uh, Matt Lay, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that the back of Triple H's head looks like a rotting cantaloupe. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a very fair, very big. What is what is rotting cantaloupe in Latin? Do you know that? Yeah, has anyone translated his Tron yet? I think it's Levesque, isn't it? <laughs> Levesque? Isn't it Levesque? Oh, oh, Larry, what you learn? Oh, boy. Um, I learned that uh, the WWE crew uh, refers to Vince McMahon in uh, three uh, letter, uh, uh, basically, initials. Just like just Osama bin Laden, Osama bin Laden, and <laughs> what? any other like dictators, <laughs> like FDR, like FDR, yeah, or J, uh, uh, JFK. No, uh, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't learn anything. <laughs> I did I honestly, I watched maybe two matches all. Week. No, no, no. no that, that's a good learn, actually. That's... That, that was a fun thing. They said they said VKM is still in the building. <laughs> good to know. That's cool. Good to know. Um, and I learned, uh, man, 
I, I learned that uh, watching wrestling in Texas in a in a shopping plaza is was a pretty cool experience. I got, <laughs> I got to see Metroplex Wrestling. They do shows every Saturday. I think I think it was described to me. This is kind of like the the trainers, like or the the trainees, uh, like our new guys kind of show. And it was um it was it was a uh, fun to, the the catch that and see like you know somebody has a nice built in arena uh right between nestled nicely between a bakery and an antique mall. As you do. As you do. As you do. Uh so uh so shout out to Metroplex Wrestling. It was a it was a nice show to kind of break up uh my my weekend uh, in Texas this weekend uh, uh doing some work and also good to uh, uh catch up with Amon. Remember that guy? Who? Oh, th- that's the other thing. Um, every time I, he's I a sit- wrestle man now. He is a wrestle man. Uh, every time I sit down with uh, Amen and Josh and anybody else from from Texas, and we talk about like what the scene's like down there, it just it's it's like a bizarro version of what we experience here in Pittsburgh, and I'm sure this is like everywhere. Uh, so it's kind of fun to, to compare notes on how things are going uh, in the in the scene uh, in wrestling there. So. Uh, so shout out to them, everybody. I mean, it was a, 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 you know, cool to feel comfortable when I'm half a country away, as usual there. And I'm looking forward. I know Alex, you already pegged me for a uh, wrestling show for us to uh, attend in downtown LA when I come. Uh, yes, sir. When I find myself in California in WrestleMania weekend, as I have been known to do lately. Uh, and uh, if you guys know anything, uh, I'll, I'll post. I guess I'll post my schedule here soon. If you guys can help me find some wrestling uh, across the country here, let's see what we can do. Um, also, I saw a SoCal Uncensored T-shirt last night at Raw. Did they make him take it off? No. Well, wait, wait, wait. It's, so it's it's the website that I think. Not not um. Wait, is someone, what are we asking about? So the kid who was in the uh, Super Kick Party uh, uh, T-shirt uh, last night. Frankie. Oh, yeah, a, oh, is that? Are Daniel they going by that and... too? That's right. Because I was thinking the website. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, that's I'm thinking the website. But anyways. Uh, Matt Lake, thank you so much for being on. Thanks for having me, man. It's always fun. Where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me at Matt Light Comedy uh, on anything. Just Google me. But I'm not the guy that played for the Patriots. There's a, Matt there's, Light a the Patriots. there's a left tackle named yeah. Matt Light, and the best thing about it is I get messages on my fan page. Oh, no. oh my! And I, I just every reply I go, "Fuck you, go Steelers." <laughs> <laughs> and like it's like fundraisers that's, that's, that's the appropriate response yeah they're yeah. like hey we, yeah. we really appreciate this would you like to do a fundraiser i'm like fuck you go see it. and they're like <laughs> i don't care <laughs> Jeez, that's amazing thank you so much thank you everybody for joining us uh in the chat room as part of mayhem mania and everything else else i've realized i did not check the chat room real quick for what we learned brandon learned that when you're on your way out of WWE, they make you feel bad about it and make you lose every match. Speaking about Ambrose, but you do the most fun stuff on the way out. You eat popcorn during your match. You eat popcorn during your match. Um, Tina, what I learned, I posted in the group. King of Swerve, Shane Strickland is headed for greener <laughs> pastures. Who, who signed him? Was it NXT? I thought he was heading that way, that but it hasn't be. been a visual yet. That might be. Oh. Um, also, Kyle Turner learned that Tommy Dreamer wants to build a wall. Of Oreos. Oh, boy. Build that wall. <laughs> Build that wall. Indeed. Uh, and <laughs> Jen Carlin's learned that wrestling hurts your feelings. Yeah. All, oh, jeez. Come all on. All of her favorite wrestlers lost last week. That's all the ones with abs. Uh, anyways. And the revival. And the revival. Yes. Um, yes. We have a moment. Real quick. I wanted to say something really important. No, we don't. Uh, thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. They have out. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.